Welcome to Chemotherapy and You. This is a class geared to provide information for caregivers and patients undergoing chemotherapy. Objectives. To inform patients and caregivers about chemotherapy and common associated side effects. To provide information about initial interventions and treatments of common chemotherapy side effects that can be performed at home. To provide guidelines for when to contact the office for patients experiencing side effects from chemotherapy, and to provide resources for patients and caregivers who wish to learn more about cancer treatments and their side effects. For today's class, we will be focusing on abnormal lab values that may occur with chemotherapy. You will likely experience some of these abnormalities. However, the severity will depend on the type and the amount of chemotherapy you receive and how your body reacts. Cancer, by definition, is a group of rapidly dividing abnormal cells. Traditionally, chemotherapy is designed to kill rapidly dividing cells, including cancer cells, as well as healthy cells that grow quickly. Examples of some of these healthy cells are the cells that make your hair, skin, and nails grow, the cells that line your gastrointestinal tract, as well as the cells in your bone marrow, where blood cells are made. Chemotherapy can cause a decrease in your blood cell counts because of its effects on bone marrow, also called myelosuppression. Your doctor will typically check your blood counts prior to each treatment. This is called a complete blood count, or also known as a CBC. Red blood cells carry oxygen throughout your body. Anemia is defined when you have too few red blood cells to carry the oxygen your body needs. This can make your heart work harder, causing it to pound or beat faster than usual. Anemia can make you feel short of breath, weak, dizzy, faint, or very tired. Some types of chemotherapy cause anemia because they make it harder for bone marrow to produce new red blood cells. Your doctor will periodically check your blood counts to evaluate for low red blood cells. There are several ways to manage anemia at home. First, limit your activities. This means doing only the activities that are important to you. When your family or friends offer to help, let them. And if you need assistance, be sure to ask for help. Get plenty of rest. Try to sleep at least eight hours each night. You may also want to take short naps, less than one hour during the day if your body tells you to do so. Eat a well-balanced diet, choosing a diet that contains all the calories and protein your body needs to help keep your weight up and repair tissues that have been harmed by cancer treatment. And don't forget to drink plenty of fluids. Stand up slowly. You may feel dizzy if you stand up too fast, and when you get up from lying down, sit for a minute before you stand to avoid dizziness and falls. It is important to contact your doctor if you have any of the following symptoms dizziness or feeling faint, fatigue that prevents you from doing your usual daily activities, and a fast or pounding heartbeat. If you experience chest pain and or shortness of breath, further evaluation at an emergency department may be recommended. Some types of chemotherapy make it harder for your bone marrow to produce new white blood cells. White blood cells help your body defend itself from infection. There are many types of white blood cells, one is called a neutrophil. When your neutrophil count is low, this is called neutropenia. Your doctor will regularly check your blood counts during your chemotherapy treatment to evaluate for low white blood cells. It is important to watch for signs of infection when you have neutropenia. Monitor for fevers greater than 100.5, hard shaking chills, or other signs of infection. It is important to contact your doctor immediately if any of these should occur. Your doctor may give you a shot to help bring your white blood cell back up more quickly after chemotherapy treatment. This injection is called Neulasta or Neupogen. It is important to remember that even if you get one of these shots, your white blood cells may still drop, so infection precautions still apply. There are several ways to manage low white blood cell counts at home. First. Wash your hands often with soap and water. Be sure to wash your hands before cooking and eating, and after you use the bathroom, blow your nose, cough, sneeze, or touch animals. Carry hand sanitizer for times when you're in public places where soap and water may not be readily available. It is critical for you to stay away from people who are sick. 
This includes people with colds, flu, measles, or chickenpox, as well as children who have just received a live virus vaccine for chickenpox or polio. Stay out of large crowds, particularly in enclosed spaces. Your mouth is the dirtiest part of your body, so be sure to brush your teeth after meals and before you go to bed using a soft bristle toothbrush. Good skin care is also important. Be gentle. Dry yourself after a bath or shower by gently patting, not rubbing your skin, and do not squeeze or scratch pimples. Use moisturizers regularly to help soften and heal dry, cracked skin. Use warm water, soap, and antiseptic to help clean your cuts immediately. Do this every day until your cut has a scab over it. And finally, be careful not to cut or nick yourself. Do not cut or tear your nail cuticles and use an electric shaver instead of a razor. When it comes to food safety, do not eat raw or undercooked meat, seafood, or eggs. Wash fresh fruit and vegetables prior to eating and store your food at a proper temperature. Be careful around animals. Do not clean your cat's litter box, pick up dog waste, or clean bird cages or fish tanks. Be sure to wash your hands after touching pets and other animals. And finally, do not get a flu shot or other types of vaccines without first asking your doctor. Some vaccines contain a live virus, which you should not be exposed to. It is important for you to call your doctor if you should experience any signs of infection. These may include fevers of 100.5 or greater, hard shaking chills or sweats, redness or tenderness around a central line or portacath site, productive cough, sinus pain or pressure, earache, painful urination or frequent need to urinate, bloody, foul smelling or cloudy urine, generalized redness or swelling, as well as rash. Your doctor may prescribe an injection the day following your chemotherapy called Nulasta in order to prevent your white blood cells from becoming extremely low. This medication is given as a one-time injection in the back of your arm or in your abdomen. It may also be given to you as an on-body injector, which is placed the day of treatment and administers the injection the following day. It is important to know that Nulasta has a very common side effect of bone pain. Because your large bones, such as your sternum, ribs, pelvis, and femurs, are bone marrow production sites, you may notice some achiness in these areas for up to five to seven days following a Nulasta injection. Recommended treatment for bone pain associated with Nulasta injection is Zyrtec 10 mg by mouth twice daily for five days starting the night prior to the injection. This is an over-the-counter medication that can be purchased at pharmacies and or large retailers. Either the branded or generic formulation is fine. Platelets are the sticky component of your blood that helps your blood clot to stop bleeding. Chemotherapy can affect your bone marrow's ability to make platelets, causing them to become low after treatment. A low platelet count is called thrombocytopenia. When your platelets are low, you may bruise or bleed easily. Your doctor will check your blood counts during your treatment regularly to evaluate for low platelets. There are several ways to manage thrombocytopenia at home. First, brush your teeth with a very soft toothbrush. It is important to blow your nose gently to avoid any nosebleeds. Be careful when using scissors, knives, or other sharp objects in order to avoid cuts and nicks and use an electric shaver instead of a razor. Be gentle with hemorrhoids and avoid enemas or suppositories when your platelet count is low. Avoid alcohol as it has a tendency to thin the blood. And finally, ask your doctor before taking blood thinners vitamins, supplements, aspirin, herbs, or over-the-counter medications while your platelet count is low. It is important to call your doctor if you notice multiple small red dots on your skin, known as petechiae, unusual bruises, bleeding that does not stop with firm pressure, black or bloody stools, bloody or pink urine, heavy or prolonged menstrual periods, severe headache, sleepiness, or changes in vision when your platelet count is low.
This slide shows an example of what your labs may look like following chemotherapy. Highlighted in blue are your hemoglobin and hematocrit, which are two red blood cell types that we monitor for anemia. Your white blood cell count is highlighted in yellow on the very top line, while your neutrophil count is highlighted in yellow towards the bottom. If you remember, this cell line helps fight infection. Finally, your platelets, or the sticky component of your blood that helps you clot, is highlighted in purple in the middle of the page. In conclusion, review the drug-specific printed materials provided to you by your physician carefully and ask questions. Remember, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Be aware that every patient is actually different. You will likely experience some of these lab abnormalities. However, the severity will depend on the type and the amount of chemotherapy you receive, as well as how your body reacts. Keep a notebook or journal of any side effects that you experience and when they occur. Bring this journal with you to your next visit, as it may help your doctor know how to treat your symptoms. Depending upon your lab values, your doctor may adjust your chemotherapy regimen. Remember to take advantage of offered support groups, patient programs, as well as educational offerings. And finally, the physicians and staff here at CCI are here to support you through your cancer treatment. Please do not hesitate to call or ask if you are uncertain about any side effects that you are experiencing. For more information, please see available online resources listed. And thank you for participating in Chemotherapy and You.